So today's project is this really cool Houghton elevator car panel. Let's go ahead and get started. So this panel was out of a parking garage and you'll notice that it's in fairly decent shape considering it was in a parking garage, though the panel is scratched up pretty good. There's a lot of scratches on this hotel lobby. This braille is worn off. You'll see the one button is completely worn off as well from its heavy use. There's scratches. See up here it says red level kind of scratched in. It's definitely gone through a bit of a beating, but I definitely think with a little bit of love we can clean this thing up and make it look a little bit better and plus make it fully working. So at the bottom here, there are the open and close buttons. So close and open. Down here we have two key switches, the light ray and independent. There's this hotel lobby sticker. It's very big and See, it's very scratched up. I'm almost debating if I want to take this off or not. Now for each of the floor buttons, instead of putting a braille like this on, now this one has the star. Each one has a color, and then the little braille is right here. So you have three, five, seven, there's no nine on that one, but pink, sky blue, 10, eight, six, and the six is kind of worn off as well, four and two. I definitely think I'm gonna leave these colors on here because they look pretty cool and they, they add some character to this panel. Then up at the top, there's the light switch, which is kind of destroyed, as you can see. This is the type of switch that you needed one of those little light switch keys for. So you'll see here if I kind of poke it, I can still activate it. Here's the alarm button. It's kind of cool. There's one of the old hot and black buttons on here. So we've got that on here as well. The emergency stop and the fan switch, which is a three position switch. And then up here it says car number 12 and there's a large speaker. And there used to be a Schindler logo on here too from when Schindler worked on it, but that's gone. So and we only have hot, so I guess that's all that matters. So now let's open this thing up and see what's inside. So there's the two sections, there's the speaker part which has four screws and then the plate itself which has again four more screws. So first there's the speaker, this is what the back of it looks like, there's a transformer, a resistor, and the speaker. I guess if I really really wanted to I could uh, make this into something but probably won't end up doing that. And then as for the plate, it's better to have the fan here. Everything is back mounted so lifting this off reveals the plate which is just a bunch of holes and all the guts down inside. And now we can take a closer look at the circuitry inside. Here's the light switch. I hope I can find a replacement for this that'll fit in there in that, that bracket. Here's the alarm button. The emergency stop. The fan switch. And this is actually a little bit loose, so I'm gonna tighten this up, but I will be taking this whole thing out to work on it. And down here is the close button, the open button, and the key switches. We kind of see how the key switches work down in there. When the key turns, it pushes these contacts or pulls them apart. So that one would, this one here would pull apart and this one would close down. So that's how those work. It also appears that this is a little loose as well. So we'll be fixing that up. So as for the buttons, these are just like the other hot and buttons we've seen before. To take the button cap off, there is a screw here with this little metal tab. The little tab slides back which lets you take the button cap off. And down inside is the bulb. So in this case, we have some LEDs, 120 volt red. So we won't be using these, but it's kind of neat. There's all red LEDs inside of here. So I'll take all the button caps out and it's, you know, same idea. Loosen up the, the screw, slide the pin back, lift it out. So there's all the caps removed and you'll see here, we still have one original bulb. Here's one of the originals here but everything else is red LED. So now that all the button caps are removed, it's time to get down below so we can start working on the wiring. And that's pretty easy to do. We just gotta take off these nuts here. This one you can see is kind of rusted on there, but luckily it's not too bad. And the whole thing lifts up where we can access the back. So looking back behind here is the grounding wire. And we got all these resistors. It looks like there's only some resistors on select few. So they have resistors on some of them, but some of them just have jumper wires. So that's quite interesting. Definitely gonna be taking this apart and cleaning these. So we gotta make sure the contacts are in good shape. And you also see here that the, the metal piece is very light. So it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, pressure to activate these. So this could be theoretically removed. There's one of these little pins here, but these are kind of annoying to remove. So I'm just gonna do the work from the back here. Hopefully I don't have to take every single button off, but if I do have to start taking the buttons off, it's pretty easy. There's just these little screws here on each one. 
and that comes off. Alright, the panel is now done and it has been moved into its new home in the collection. It sits right next to the long panel. And you can see here that all of the buttons light up. And the panel's been cleaned up. There's the bell, emergency stop, and the fan. If you enjoy these types of videos and daily elevator content, consider subscribing to the channel. And thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time.